Welcome to Chemical Process Safety. This video is about concentration unit conversion. When looking for data related to harmful quantities of toxicant, you might encounter concentrations reported in different ways. Commonly, you'll see ppm, parts per million. However, you might also see concentrations in mass per volume, for example, milligrams per cubic meter. Recognize that these quantities have different units and actually entirely different dimensions as well. If you're using a formula that includes concentration, be careful about what units are needed. You might have to convert from one version to the other. Of course, you could just use the conversion formula listed in the book, but that doesn't explain where it comes from. And when I don't understand where something comes from, I'm prone to forget it. Here's how I like to think about this, and keep in mind this is only one of many possible derivations. If you take the ratio of toxicant moles and total moles, Multiply by 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 6, since I'm always allowed to multiply by 1 mathematically. The denominator is now 1 million moles, and this is an expression for concentration in units of ppm. I'm going to multiply by 1 again, except this time 1 is represented as R, the gas constant, times T, the temperature, divided by P, the pressure. This step might seem strange, but if we assume the ideal gas law is valid, we can say that volume is equal to nRT divided by P. Therefore, I can substitute volume for all of this. Next, let's multiply by 1 yet again. This time, 1 is the mass of toxicant over the mass of toxicant. Now I can pull out mass of toxicant divided by total volume, since this is literally the definition of concentration in mass per volume units. Almost finished. Mass is equal to moles times the molecular weight. This is a calculation you hopefully learned in material and energy balances. Let's substitute it. The final step is using the ideal gas law again to substitute volume over moles, which can be replaced by RT over P. So there you have it. Here is your formula that relates the concentration in mass per volume units to parts per million. Feel free to use it, provided that the ideal gas law assumption is valid. Oh, and one last thing. Be careful about your units. Whenever you're performing a calculation like this, write out your units and make sure they cancel. This will depend, for example, on which version of the gas constant you're using. Here's a challenge for you. See if you can understand why I'm still multiplying by 10 to the 6th. If you're having trouble, I'll give you a hint that it's because I'm assuming certain values for concentration and mass per volume units. Okay, that's all. Bye for now.